Hey, it's Jake, and Adobe has done something that they haven't in over 17 years, and that is refresh the presets that are bundled with Adobe After Effects, and even better, they got some actual motion designers to create the presets, and I just happen to be one of those motion designers. Now, these presets are currently only available in the beta version of After Effects, but anyone with a Creative Cloud subscription can download that, and I'll show you how to do it. But I'm gonna walk you through the presets that I made, as well as give away a project file that has every single new preset included in it so you don't have to go digging and figure out which ones are new and which ones are 17 years old. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about the sponsor, BenQ and their Screen Bar Plus Monitor Lite. As someone who spends a good chunk of their day working at their computer, eye strain is a serious problem, especially at night when I have to use artificial lighting. The Screen Bar Plus is fantastic because it illuminates everything on my desk, still providing that overhead light, but the light bar itself does not shine any light into my eyes. And my entire desk is now illuminated at pretty much the same brightness as my screen, so my eyes don't have to constantly adjust back and forth every time I look away from the screen. And there's some really cool features of this light. The control dial allows you to increase and decrease the brightness, but also the color temperature. And this is something that can really bug me when a light is too blue or too yellow. I love that I can dial this into exactly the color that I want, but even more than that, there's an ambient light mode that adapts to your room's lighting. So if I had my window shade open, this would adapt to how bright my room actually is and provide more or less light, depending on the time of day and how much light is actually coming into the room. And it's powered through my BenQ monitor, which I already owned, and all I have to do is turn it on and off, and the light will go on with it. To find out more information about this Screen Bar Plus, check the links in the description, and thank you to BenQ for sponsoring this video. So how do you get the beta version of After Effects? Well, just open up the Creative Cloud desktop app, go down to this beta apps section on the left column, and you will find all of the beta versions of all the software that's available. You can install the After Effects beta. This is updated on a nightly basis, so there's always gonna be a new version. Once you have it installed, you can open it up just like any other version of After Effects. It looks almost identical. You can find out more information about what's new in the beta just by clicking this button right here, and it'll tell you about all of the new changes or everything that's been changed changed and in development, and eventually these features make their way into the public release of After Effects. Now, I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'm just gonna show you the text presets that I created and are now included with After Effects. You can find them under Animation Presets, Presets, and then Text, and there are a lot of text presets. These are notoriously not that great. If you click on the little hamburger menu, go to Browse Presets, that'll open Adobe Bridge, which looks like this, and you can actually browse through the text preset. So if I go into Text, and say go into Animate In, you can get little previews of each one of these, but like I said, notoriously, they're not that great and I don't recommend really getting much use out of them. But now that there are new updated presets that have been created by people that have been using After Effects for years, there's actually a decent amount of stuff in here that's really useful. So let me walk you through the eight that I contributed. This first one is called Slide and Pop In. Anytime that you see in, there's generally going to be a corresponding out animation. So if you just search slide and there's my two presets, slide and pop in, slide and pop out. So the text just drops down. But what's cool about these presets is that I've built in a lot of expression controls so that you can customize this without having to dig through the text animator and going into the layer at all. So you can change this animation from animating by word to animating by character, and now they're going to appear by character. You can change the Y position offset for where they're coming from. So if I move this down, then it's gonna pop in from below. So lots of cool controls with all of these that you can mess around with. The next one I created is called 3D Rotate on the X axis, and this is what it looks like. So it rotates in, it uses per character 3D. Again, you can mess with all different kinds of controls in here, including alternating the characters so that they come in at different directions on every other character. So again, play around with the controls to get something that you like. This one is called Alternating Characters. It's similar to the previous one, but it's not 3D. It's just scaling and moving the position of every other character, and again, you change how it's animating. It could fade in, it could scale in, lots of different controls. Blinking Cursor Typewriter Console. That's a mouthful, but it's gonna give you that blinking cursor before revealing the text. It's basically the typewriter preset that we've all been wanting, and you have some controls for changing what that cursor looks like. So it's defaulted to do a vertical bar, but we could change it to a carrot, and there you go. And little tip, if you want to do a custom character that's not in this list, select that text layer. Double tap the E key, go into the source text expression, and I'll make this 
a little bit bigger, but right here, these are all the characters, the special characters that correspond to this drop down menu. The actual expression control, this drop down menu won't change, but if you wanted to put in a, a special character right here in the first one, I could change that to an ampersand, click off, and now as long as this is set to the first option, the blinking cursor is going to be an ampersand. So, little hack there for you. Blur and fade, this is going to just blur and fade the text on. It's a very slow, kind of cinematic, moody text animator. Very simple, but effective, and again, lots of extra controls for adjusting how that animates on. Glitchy Text Decoder, this is similar to the blinking cursor typewriter. It's got that blinking cursor again, but it's more like a matrix style decoder. Lots of controls on this one as well, so if we wanted this to glitch out even further, I could go to the position glitch X amount and turn that up, position glitch Y amount, and now it's gonna have a lot more glitchiness to it. You can also turn off the character glitch amount, so if I turn that down to zero, it's not going to shuffle through the characters. It's just gonna shift them around. And again, we have lots of options here for that cursor shape. Next up is scale from point, and this is scaling from any point on the line. So a percentage from zero to 100, it's defaulted to the center, or 50%, but I could say put that to 25%, and now it's gonna scale up from that point. We could change this from going from the start point outwards, or outwards to the start point. So it's, again, very flexible, lots of extra controls there. And then finally, I have slide from comp edge, and this is one of my favorites. What this does is exactly what it sounds like, but watch what happens happens when I grab the text in the middle of the animation and move it around. Everything is attached to the top of the comp or say the right of the comp, and no matter where you move your text, it's always going to animate from that edge, whatever you have selected here. So I could put it at the bottom, I could say animate it by word, I could say animate it from the end to the start. Lots of options, very dynamic and responsive to your comp. Those were the eight that I contributed. Like I said, there are lots of new presets and I've organized them all in here. So go to the new presets folder. This has absolutely everything in it and not only text animators, but also shapes. And I'm making this project file available for you to download. Just check the link in the description. That'll take you to where you can download this. It does only work with the beta version of After Effects, or once this version is pushed to the public release, then it should work with that one. Just know that you're gonna need the beta version at this point in time. Now, I don't know all of the creators that contributed to all of these presets, but I do know for sure that one of them was our buddy Evan Abrams over at EC Abrams. He created some very useful tools, like an animated clock that you have some controls on for the speed and how big it is, things like that, as well as all of these different map pins. This is all from the same preset and you can just choose what type of pin and then it's gonna animate like that. Very easy to use. And then force anchor point, this one is really great. This allows you to change the anchor point on any layer with this dropdown. So it's defaulted to the center of the layer, but I could say put it to the bottom left corner and now it's gonna scale from there or maybe the top center. It's just a really great thing to have as a preset for any layer that you wanna apply it to. So big shot Shout out to Evan for those. And as you can see, not all of these new presets are text animators. Some of them are actual graphics that you can use. So I've put together a contact sheet of everything. These first couple rows almost entirely are graphics. Again, you can just go into this new presets folder and into shapes. Some of these are really great, like the composition border. It sounds simple, but having this as a preset is great. It's going to automatically size to the border. You can change the size, you can offset the border, and you can change the border color. It's just simple, great to have those controls right in your effects rather than digging through the shape layer. And there's some other great ones in here too. Under the elements folder, there's a 2D text box with a lot of controls. If you go to the effects controls, look at all of these expression controls to customize how this box works. You choose the layer that you want it to be working with and you can modify all kinds of things about it. So again, just go check the link in the description and you'll have access to that project file. Download it, take a look at the new presets, start using them, leave any questions down in the comments if you have any about my presets. I hope that they become useful to you and that you actually start to lean on the presets that are bundled with After Effects. Thanks to Adobe for allowing me to include some of my own work in After Effects and kind of be included with the history of the program. That's kind of crazy to think about. And thank you to you for watching this video and a huge shout out to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Your support means the world to me, and if you're interested in supporting more videos like this one, consider becoming a patron. Again, the link is down in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.